Just tell me I look like shit. It's fine. No, I look like crap. Look at me and look at you. You're no, glowing. I'm not glowing. I think it's just the lighting that's making you think this. I There's not a single thing different of me today than it was uh, last week. In <sighs> fact, I'm going to go even further to say that I look worse today than I did last week no. because my hair is not even clean. No, you look so good. It's just lighting. I, and I think you're overdoing it because you feel bad. <laughs> I'm not. I'm underdoing. Look at me. I was looking at myself. I was done for the day. I completely forgot. <laughs> you were watching Law and Order. Reminded me just an hour ago. I forgot. <laughs> I was ready to just like snooze. I was watching Law and Order, old, real old episodes of Law and Order. I'd taken my bra off. I'm at no nighttime routine for today. I've I've been on the road all day today because I had to go to the most western part of Maryland and come back. That's like a whole other country and back in so many different ways. So, <laughs> well, good news is this podcast does not require a bra, so yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. So now I'm like extremely tired. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna float off and sleep. And then I got your text. And I'm like, oh shit, yeah, of course, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Well, you actually look very relaxed. I don't. I look terrible on my screen. Maybe it's my screen. You look so beautiful. You're glowing. And I look like all kinds of dark circles. And I look like a monster right now. All right. Maybe it's my screen. (laughs) Maybe we should just be nice to each other. I don't even want to see myself on the screen. Oh, God. It's so dramatic. All right. Ugh. Well, today we're going to talk about Real Housewives of New York, as mm-hmm. usual. Um, big episode for Aaron, I guess. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving this show. At first, I was like, why so much Aaron, right? Yeah. But I feel like in the end, I was glad I was shown enough Aaron to validate the fact that she is just the worst. Yes. And correct. that I'm not the only one who thinks that. It's all her co-workers too. And the producers. The producers that also know that she's the worst. So they're showing everything she's, about yes. her. Yeah. I don't think there's a single likable thing about Aaron. I'm not going to lie to you. No. I, I think no. that what's – I think that Aaron is – she's somebody who's like her whole life been rich and popular and – has access to a lot of things. So she was just like, oh, I'm fun and I'm chill and I'm normal and I'm going to go on this TV show and everyone's going to love me because like I'm a normal person. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, no, you're Mm -hmm. actually not normal at all. You grew up extremely privileged and you acting like a normal is making you uh, worse and more unlikable and everybody around you notices and you even know that and that's why you're so insecure and that's why you're so snippy and mean to everybody. While acting like everything is fine. Yeah. The entire event, her event, whenever they panned to her, she was constantly looking sideways. Is, is everyone yeah. enjoying? Is everyone <laughs> laughing at these jokes? Is everyone listening? Is everyone paying attention? Constantly. Mm-hmm. I don't think she quite enjoyed her own event because she wasn't, she was such a bag of nerves and she was so wound up about making a good party for the TV show. Yeah. So this episode opens with uh, shopping for Aaron's anniversary party. You have Uba, who takes Aaron to Jacob the Jeweler. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Jacob the Jeweler? He went to jail. What? Really? Yeah. Tell me more about Jacob the Jeweler. I don't know anything about Jacob the Jeweler. Okay, Jacob the Jeweler in the 90s was like, he was like the like jeweler for the stars and he was really, he got really popular because he used to do. Is that like, was there like a radio ad and stuff that would used to happen like TV ad or radio ad? No, 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 no. No, No, Jacob Jacob the Jeweler is not a radio. sounds familiar. No, he was like, he was the jeweler to the rappers. So he was like a jeweler for Biggie Ah. and Jay-Z and Nas and then like Drake and 50s, like all these people were his clients and he got really, really famous. I mean, like rappers used to put him in his rap songs and stuff. Like they would name him because they were like, that's the jeweler that you go to. 
And then yeah. at some point, let me see, in 2006, he was arrested on accusations that he and other consp- others conspired to launder $270 million in drug profits from the Black Mafia family. What? <laughs> And the only reason he – oh, so he was sentenced to two and a half years in federal prison in order to pay $50,000 and an additional $2 million as forfeiture to the U.S. government. Um, he was – he pled guilty for falsifying records and giving false statements as part of a deal he struck with the federal prosecutor. So I think he was a snitch and he got a deal. He pled to get mm-hmm. a deal. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he served some mm-hmm. time, but – you know, I was like, oh, Jacob, I haven't seen you in a minute. I haven't seen you since the 90s. So <laughs> nice. Oh, wow. Nice to Look see you that. also get I didn't get anything reboot. about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was yeah. He was like very popular. I'm going to say late 90s and early 2000s. Oh, wow, and you have been touched by, the, by Prince Albert. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that was. Like Ubo being like, oh, we know each other. I was like, do you? I don't. I don't think you do, actually. I think that Jacob's been rebooted as part of the Roni yeah. reboot. But he's been my best friend. I was like, well, no, he doesn't act like you, but he doesn't seem to even... He seemed a little confused by seeing Uba, too. He's like, are you the person I said yes to on the phone that you could come into my store? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was somebody else. I think he, he seemed confused, like, does he actually know her or not? Okay, you're breaking up a lot. I don't know if it's your internet or my internet. But you're like super choppy. So I'm going to stop it. Fine to me. Oh, I do? Okay. That's probably Mm -hmm. mine. Hold on. It's my internet. My Wi Fi has been shit lately. I think it's been shit because my husband got in a fight with Verizon. And I think that Verizon does something every time you call them that you complain about something. (laughs) Yeah, like the Shamim house. No, the the Zaheer household is like. The hero yelling at us. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, that address. Wait, side note. Do you know that we didn't have water on our street like for the, for like 12 hours last night into this morning? What? There was a water. Why would I know that, first of all? No, why you, would you assume you know. that? The way you were asking, did you know? Like, why would I know that? <laughs> and I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> that, was I informed by the neighborhood watch? No, I live in a different state. <laughs> Well, I you No, I did not know that because you did not <laughs> you did not text me. What kind of question is that? I'm sorry. <laughs> well, there's a water main break in my neighborhood on our street and our whole street didn't have We had water. one too. That's why I said what? Because we had one too. Oh. <laughs> but ours did not affect us. It affected a bunch of our other neighbors, but not our particular street. Oh, okay. But we had one too in our neighborhood. Well, I didn't know about that either cuz you didn't tell me. <laughs> I didn't, yeah. I didn't think it was relevant. Okay. Well, I'm saying it because maybe the water main break had something to do with the Wi Fi. Okay, now that we're not even talking about the show, the Wi Fi is fine. <laughs> How would the water main break have anything to do with the Wi Fi? This is crazy. <laughs> are you are you on NyQuil or something? What is going on? Here? I feel like the Verizon people and the water people are in cahoots and they were like, this motherfucker called us. From that street in West Orange and yelled at us about the fucking. Did I take a gummy? Did you take a gummy? It doesn't make sense. This is not making sense. This whole All I'm saying is that my husband called Verizon to scream at them about the Sunday ticket. <laughs> and then you couldn't. And I, what? And the Wi Fi is shoddy. And now I feel like Verizon is in cahoots with the water company. And I lost water for 12 hours. <laughs> Calm down, Denise Richards. <laughs> the company is out to get you. The Advil people are following me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I had a stupid joke. So did you take a shower or I not? I did. Did blow up his after shower? Well, that's what you were shower. like talking about how I look nice. And I'm like, I took the fastest shower of my life because like I woke up, there was like barely any water. And then we had to wait. We had to like flush all the water and all over the house through all the taps so that I don't go take a shower and have brown water. <laughs> but then I had to go to the office. So I took the fastest shower of my life. And here you are telling me that I look nice. And I don't. <laughs> Maybe that's the secret. You need to start taking fast showers. Maybe. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so you don't strip anyway. off the natural oils. <laughs> oh, that's what this is. <laughs> All right. Um, 
Uba is inviting Aaron to borrow a bunch of jewelry, and I feel like that's the kind of friendship Aaron is really looking for. She's looking for friends who do things like this for her, but I don't think she's looking for any other kind of friends. Yeah, that's like, what she hinted when she sent the uh, the invite list with sponsors on it. Yeah. She was like, do you have other sponsors that you want me to add to this? And so Uba was like, oh, I see what kind of an event this is. Here's my friend, Jacob. Who can oh. then, uh, who can lend you this and you can advertise his store and then maybe I get something for free. There you go. That makes Uba sense. Uba read the invitation thoroughly and invited Aaron to the uh, Jacob the jeweler. There you go. <laughs> um, uh, somewhere else in town, Bryn and Jessel go to a boutique and they're shopping for the outfit while also like bitching about the event they have to go to, which I feel like is like such a quintessential thing that you do at a certain age in your life, you know? Yes. I feel like there's so many moments with my girlfriends when we're both invited to like an event. We're like, do we really want to go to this? And then you go mm-hmm. shopping for the event. You're like, I'm tired. And this seems really corny. And I can't believe we have to go to somebody's vow renewal anniversary party and look at their corny right. ass invitation with all these sponsors. I just felt like that was really <laughs> real. And it was so funny that Jessel was the one that, you know, clocked it right away. She's like, this looks like an event I would throw for a fashion house with a whole bunch of sponsors on it. Do you need a promoter to get it? <laughs> yes, exactly. And I feel like... um Again, Aaron is complaining about the cackling hags thing. She's still mad about not supporting friends and I'm like – or not supporting women. I'm like, she never said that about you, Aaron, first of all. Mm-hmm. And Jessel's absolutely yeah. right when she says, Aaron has a problem with everybody, which is what you and I said right. also last week. So right. one point mm-hmm. for Jessel as her chart continues to climb up to the sky. God, <laughs> I love this lady. <laughs> she is quite good. <laughs> Uh, she's exactly the opposite of what I feared she would be. And I'm like so glad that she is terrible, but not terrible as a housewife. She is actually terribly good as a housewife. Yeah. Like she, this is really good. The other thing was yeah, that like she's, it, what is this? Like, yeah. They've been married for 10 years or 12 years, Aaron and um, Abe. Did I hear I it correctly years. that they've been married for 12 years? Okay. I thought it was 12 years and I, I was like, what an odd year have a party no i think you are right it has been 12 years because she said before that they've been married for 12 years and she's right. 20 that's what it she got married at 25 how old is she aaron is 36 so i think it has been 10 years because she said she got married at 25 so that makes sense i think yeah, it's been okay. 10 years okay yeah yeah okay um I, I, for some reason i thought it was 12 and i was like huh that's weird in any case <laughs> She does this big ass things where she's, uh, you know, they're exchanging vows, but they make it into in this big bank like play. And I thought that was like the location was great. And I wish there had been more music and dance and performances by other people that would have been like really good and entertaining. But this huge big hall and just people standing around talking. Oh, it just felt like oh. it felt like one of the most boring parties ever absolutely we'll get into aaron's anniversary party because i took a lot of notes on it there's just a lot of feelings that i have about this lady but <laughs> I before knew we that get would to that you. <laughs> oh my god of course jenna is um what doesn't jenna do she's a fashion designer a stylist an interior designer a lash creator she's working with what's her mm-hmm. face from Shit's creek i was like okay mm-hmm. amazing is that who that was i didn't know who that was Yes, that was Stevie from Schitt's Creek. Oh. But my favorite scene of this episode is Jessel and Bovet doing Montessori applications. Oh, that was such a beautiful scene. Oh, my goodness. Bovet is just such a typical Desi husband. Is he not? He's so much a typical Desi husband. Doesn't want to spend money. Is uh, very pragmatic to the point of annoying but Mm -hmm. that pragmatism is something so important when you have a wife like Jessel (laughs) who probably doesn't have a clue how you how to you know keep the money that they earn (laughs) and and I think the interaction between them where Jessel makes a snide comment and he makes another snide comment back or he's like he doesn't even 
let what she says affect him. And he's pretty straightforward. I don't think for all the talk that everybody says, Jessel hates her husband, Jessel hates her husband. I think that's how they interact. It's like Emily and Shane in OC. They just are constantly ribbing each other. And that's their love language. That's how they interact with each other. I don't think it bothers either of them. I think that that's their whole thing. I think it's adorable. Also, I would say that you need somebody like Bhavith because you could say that Jessel is financially inept, if not socially inept. <laughs> yes. And I would even go but as far no, as to say Jessel, adept, adept. That's yeah. what you want to say, adept, <laughs> adept, adept. I love that she's like Rio is thoughtful and intelligent. He's one. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? Rio does not throw all the all the all the food off the table onto the floor. He's very thoughtful. It's the other one that pushes everything down. <laughs> yeah. What how is a one year old baby? He always uses his crayon on paper. Yeah. <laughs> also, how do you measure thoughtfulness? You're like Rio is empathetic. Is he? How do you know that? Um, I do have to say oh this. The price tag of this place was crazy, right? $62,000. He does come yeah. with an Apple Mac, an iPad, lunches, and school trips. Right. Great. Yeah. I know that that's crazy, but in New, in New Jersey, there is private Montessori's that are uh-huh. thirty-five to $40,000 a year. And that's New Jersey. Yes. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, New York City, I would have expected a lot more. I know that there are private you know, uber wealthy people going Montessori's in Maryland where, you know, the football players, kids, or, you know, some of the big CEO kids go. And that that Montessori and that private school at that point when this was like about five, six years ago, I had um um I had um just like sister in law who used who was always socially climbing. <laughs> and she sent her kid there and she shelled out about it was 35K or 40K for a private school. Yeah. So. And then they, they eventually went broke. So they went moved to a different state and sent their kids to public school. After that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but she was very ambitious at one point. <laughs> so there was some sort of like a tweet or a blind item or something. I don't know what it was, but somebody was like, I heard from really good resources, re- really really insider sources that Jessel rents her apartment in New York City and she moved there just to film the show. And I was like, renting an apartment in New York City is not a big deal, guys. Like it just blew my mind because it reminds me how how disconnected the rest of like the Bravo viewership is of people – in mm-hmm. actual New York City because Jessel renting her apartment is normal. It's a really nice apartment and she probably pays a lot of money for it. But renting an apartment yeah. is not out of the norm. But apparently mm-hmm. she saw the tweet or the post and she wrote, yeah, I also got my husband and my kids from Craigslist. Like, I'm just loving Jessel. Okay. <laughs> I'm really upset. I'm going to be upset when she does something absolutely egregious, but I'm really just loving the shit out of her so far. Yeah. And now I'm afraid that I'm loving her because I'm like, oh, she's going to do something really terrible and I'm going to be so upset and embarrassed by her. <laughs> yeah. Don't you feel, I think maybe you mentioned that she's like reminds me of like Lisa Barlow in her like. Yeah. Because we start, okay, we started off by saying that she reminded us of Kyle. Kyle. And, and insecure. Insecure. Yeah. But now I'm like putting Kyle, the Kyle hat completely on Kyle and Ramona combined hat on, uh, on, uh, Aaron. Yes. I'm not, I've taken it off of Jessel. Jessel is. You're, she's more Lisa Barlow than anything. She has the delusions, possibly, of a Karen Huger. Okay? Yes. And to that, I say, what the fuck else more do I want? <laughs> I want this. <laughs> also, because, like, yeah. Jessel doesn't hurt anybody else. She only hurts herself. And I think that that's really important. Yeah. And if she, when she is called out, she owns her shit and she is – She takes it just as well as she gives it. So I'm always appreciative of that. Exactly. And so far, what we know is we can all, Jessel doesn't lie. So far, Jessel hasn't lied to us. Mm -hmm. She has owned her shit. 
And if Jessel says something, then that's probably true. If Aaron says something, that's probably not true because Je- Aaron has lied a couple of times so far. Exactly. So I feel like now I trust Jessel more in whoever she is and whatever she presents. She is who she is and she's not trying to pull the wool over our eyes. And I'm appreciative of her genuine, honest portrayal of herself and not really putting and whatever she's trying to do, like when she's trying to pretend to be rich and pretend to be one of these, um, you know, social um, society people, she, she's not, she is doing it so blatantly that she's not hiding her social climbing. Yeah. She's like, this is what I want to do. I am aspirational. I may be I may be something that you aspire to, but I'm aspiring to be somebody else. I want to be in Tom Cruise's house having breakfast with him. That's what she wants. Exactly. Like there's like a difference between the type of social climbing that like the type of like uh, experience that you have of like somebody like Sai versus somebody like Jessel, right? Like Sai is like, I'm a boss Mm -hmm. bitch and I do my own thing and I control everything. Whereas Jessel is like, I don't actually have to do any of the things. I can actually just climb on people and get the things, which is the (laughs) thing that you want out of a housewife. I don't want to see a boss bitch, to be honest. That's okay. I don't – (laughs) okay. Influencer, sure. Plus, we have one in we have one in um in um uh, uh, Jenna anyway. Exactly. We don't want too many of those. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, speaking of Sai, um, we have like a scene at our house. I don't care for it, except I have to say that so far her husband David is one of possibly the nicest, most normal humans that we have ever seen on Bravo, especially a male. He is so nice. yes. He's so understanding. But he also did Sai a favor in this epi- in this episode. He helped us understand Sai by explaining to the audience how Sai reacts in emotional situations. And he almost seems to like, here, let me let me explain to your audience what kind of a person you are because you are otherwise people are going to take you the wrong way. Yeah. So he almost seems to be um, he's like, this is who you are. When people are emotional around you, you don't want to have those conversations. You check out. You don't like that. And uh, he is like, but that doesn't mean that you don't care. It's just something that you don't like to discuss and you don't want to handle. So he is giving her, he is making me like Sai more than Sai would make me like Sai. Yeah. Like Sai doesn't make me want like her. But I think when I see her through the lens of her husband, I feel like I understand her more. Yeah. And that's a that's a good husband. Yeah. And you know, it's <laughs> wild because like Sai's whole thing as an influencer is that she is the brand that she is selling, right? Like she's the brand. Mm-hmm. So brands go to her to for her to promote their stuff because right. an influencer is a person who can convince you to buy a thing. That's their whole brand. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Sai does not sell herself well at all. Like I mm-hmm. don't like mm-hmm. Sai until uh, – exactly what you said. Until David is like, let me help people understand that you're not a monster. And I'm like, I still don't yeah. think that I'm fully there. But I do feel like somebody this nice like has to find – Would someone. not be with somebody who's a monster. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, if he – David David seems to be one of the nicest people on TV and if he is with Sai, then Sai must have some redeeming qualities that she hasn't shown us because she is uh, she is putting a show for the for the show and not really letting us see her vulnerable side. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's the day of Aaron's anniversary party. Everyone's getting ready except for Uba, who has COVID. And I have to say, we've barely gotten any Uba on the show so far. And I have a theory. Mm-hmm. I have a theory that Uba was maybe potentially just going to be a friend of, and something uh-huh. happens later on in the season, which gives us more Uba. Like Uba really s- stands out. Because so far, it's like Uba really does pop in like a friend of. Like we've barely spent right, any time right. with her. You're right. I'm excited to see what she does because apparently in the trailer, Jacob I saw the jeweler that- gave Uba a COVID. So I'm blaming him. Okay. Was that the same day? Because I was like, if Uba has COVID, then how come Aaron? Yeah. Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, are you spreading COVID to everybody in your, in your, yeah. And Aaron didn't even say, oh, I met with you just yesterday or the day before or whatever. 
maybe I should get tested too. Yeah. I'm and like, she didn't even, and even when Aaron called her, she was more, she was more concerned about just griping about her own stuff. When Uba says she has COVID, it was a very short conversation. And Aaron was like, okay, feel better. Yeah. She was like, are the diamonds still coming or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they get to the party and. How did you feel about Aaron's dad? Uh, he reminded me of Aviva's dad. Uh-huh. Is how I felt about Aaron's dad. So a creep. Yeah, yeah. It was. I didn't. I didn't like the way he was kept pull, touching Aaron too, like pulling on her chest and rubbing on her chest, and I was like, okay. Yeah, and did you I, see? I, I don't know why that makes me feel like. No. You're way too handsy with people. It was way too handsy. He kept literally cupping her boob. I was like, this is too much. And then he also said, I could see your tits, which like, I don't know, for like a dad to say that gives me like bad feelings. Um, Yeah. And then also, did you see the way that his, his girlfriend was like, giving Aaron the side eye when they like introduced when he was like oh this is my friend and then the girlfriend was like oh and she gave Aaron the dirtiest look and I was like you know Aaron you know Aaron is a nasty bitch because (laughs) for anybody to look at her like that like it just I don't know it just gave me this feeling like this is not the first time but also the dad you know I mean whoever anybody who's dating the dad that's true I feel like it's like yeah it doesn't have the Really, I don't know. I, I I don't know that man enough, but the first five minutes, if I were in that same room, I would have run away from him. I would have been like, no, he's a creepy dude. Yeah, he's I would not be around. Super that. creepy dude. Um, Bryn shows up dressed like a bride or just whoever. She looks like yeah. she looks like she's ready to be somebody's mistress. She's ready to be somebody's stepmom. She she came in. She's ready to, you know, skin some Dalmatians, make a out of the, I don't know what. She came high as a kite, stoned to the nines, ready to fuck shit up. And I was like, <laughs> I don't like Bryn when she like does too much. She's like, I like, yeah. I like sex. But like, this was funny to me. I was like, this is hilarious. She called yes. herself the stepmom from Parent Trap, which is like a very deeply mm-hmm. millennial thing. And I was like, yes, that <laughs> is what you look like. Like, it just, you know, Ramona would never say that because she's never watched the pa- Parent mm-hmm. Trap. You know what I mean? She'd be like, Parent Trap? Which one? What? Yeah, exactly. What? Parent Trap. Yeah. Who trapped Whoa. a parent? What? <laughs> Who trapped a parent? <laughs> Um, but, uh, then Jessel comes and what I love about Jessel is that she comes, she meets Aaron, Aaron's dad, and then immediately insults Puppet. <laughs> he doesn't know anything. She's like, don't ask him. He's with you. Yeah. He's like, how long have you been married? She's like, since 2014. Don't ask him. He doesn't know anything. I'm like, I... <laughs> You know, okay. Before that, when he's Pavit is getting ready, she's so impressed that he had a good, he had picked up good clothes, and he's like, she's like, whoa, I'm so impressed. And then Pavit feels like he's won a couple of, you know, compliments. He's got a couple of points there, but then she cuts him short in front of her. It's amazing. Aaron Stan, <laughs> like Ben and Ronnie have up an impression of Jessel, which is two things: she hates Pavit. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. She hates Pavit and she's obsessed with Jenna because then Jenna comes to yeah. the party and Jenna – first she comes and she grabs Aaron's ass. Aaron doesn't even notice. But later on, Jenna tells all the girls that she's newly single, right? And no one is more concerned mm. about it than Jessel. Jess is like, what? Jenna, when did this happen? <laughs> Jenna, are you okay? <laughs> like – it's ex- it's like it's also Jessa trying to prove to the other girls that if it's okay that you guys didn't know, but how did I not know? <laughs> Must have just happened because I am Jenna's best friend, <laughs> and if I didn't know, it must have just happened. <laughs> She's trying so hard to make Jenna happy that she's like, "Do you want to have a threesome with me and my husband?" I'm like, Jessel, calm down. <laughs> Don't stop though. You're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I'm just trying to imagine Pavit with Jenna. That would be like. <laughs> I don't think Jenna, like Jenna wants to be, like, be with I don't Pavit. know what to do here. It's a threesome. I don't know what to do here. It's a threesome. And I'm kind of nervous. Okay. I don't know what to do. I've never done this before. Uh, I love it. Um, 
So, <laughs> but when Jenna tells the girls that she's newly single, Sai is like, I really appreciate Jenna opening up to me. So now she can lean on me. And I got a feeling between the way Sai said that and also how she was like being with Bryn, being like, Bryn is poor and uh-huh. doesn't have friends. B- Bryn is poor and hates her family. Bryn grew up poor. Right. Tell everybody how you're poor, Bryn. Like, Sai likes to rescue, like, random bump. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. That's what I wrote. I said, Sai may have a broken bird collection like Lisa Vanderpump. <laughs> Sai fancies herself to be Vanderpump. Yes, exactly. That's if she starts having like two swans outside her house next season, you know she's trying to do that. Yeah, then it's (laughs) over. Then we know that she's talking business. Um, Sai also comes solo, and I love the way she tells Aaron. You know what? David wasn't sad about the babysitter. He was okay about it. He was fine. He was okay. He was fine. <laughs> That's why I love that. If she says it to Bryn's face and turns away and the camera just pans to Br- uh, not Bryn, Aaron's face and turns away and then the pa- camera just slightly <laughs> comes to Aaron's face and Aaron is like, huh? <laughs> she doesn't know if she should be offended or not. <laughs> it's amazing. I loved it. Um the entertainment, <laughs> like you said, very boring event. There's nothing really going on. <sighs> There's no food. Um, and the entertainment essentially is Bryn. Bryn is flirting with Abe. Um, she also yeah. is flirting. She also jokes around by saying that she's going to be Aaron's stepmom. And mm-hmm. I just – okay, I was I, – I know that if I was at an event – if it, it was my event and I heard that somebody was behaving this way, of course I would be annoyed. But as a viewer, I'm mm-hmm. watching this and I'm – cracking up like I thought it was so funny because she is being obviously silly and joking and everything like and like you said she seemed a little high she's like she couldn't stop talking she was like blah 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 blah. yeah and yes it's like she was on something uh but also it's like okay so you have all of these people and they're going to it's like every sponsor to her event got to give her say so say a few words (laughs) It was like everybody was getting up and talking. And for you to have all these women, again, there was no food. Aaron says there was food. There was no food. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And for them to come all the way there and then you don't have food and you are you keep talking over and over again. And if people are talking, there's nothing. You cannot stop. The, everybody knows if you have an event, you keep it short. Mm-hmm. All the speech mm-hmm. is short. Otherwise, people are going to start talking. It's just natural there was, for that. Yeah. And then Erin's sister, she sends her sister over. <laughs> and I love that she sends the sister over. But then Erin's mom turns around to talk to the girls. And then they're like, we can't talk Because Erin's mom wants to be on TV too. Yeah. And then <laughs> And then Bryn cuts her off. She's like, no, we got into trouble. No, we can't talk now. <laughs> and Aaron's mom looks so lost. She's like, oh, okay. I thought that was hilarious. Yes. And I love the fact that after they get scolded, they're all like, no, it's true. We need to be quiet. Like, this is fucked up. It is. And then immediately they're like, do you think Nobu is open? I'm so hungry. I have to go eat some food. Like, it just – I know that it's annoying – but it's a very real interaction that I unfortunately have been a part of in the past. Right. You know? Right. What What did you think of the vows? Uh, you didn't, yeah, after 10 years, this is the best you could come up with? It just, uh, I just, I hate uh, the cadence of. Really? You were dying to say those words to each other? Yeah. In front of uh, 200 people? Yeah. On camera, in front of millions of people, those were the words that you were dying to say for 10 years? <laughs> And, and you felt like you did and done. Uh, and and like uh and they didn't even include they didn't even include their they have children. They didn't include the children in any of the wows. They didn't say anything about the kids. It, it I don't know. It just felt like uh the wows that somebody might say in their twenties when they got married for the first time. Yeah. And they didn't know how to write vows. Yeah. And also That's the all. The cadence of like Aaron's vows was also annoying. It sounded like a bridesmaid speech. It was like, Abe, right. you are my best friend. And if you weren't my best friend, like shut up, Aaron. And then also she said something yeah. like, if I was in a if I if like she said something like, if you weren't my husband, aka I wasn't attracted to you. Like, who says aka? Yeah. 
Who says AKA yeah. in a vow? It's uh, so weird. Also known as husband, also known as attracted to you. What? <laughs> Do you know what AKA means? Like, spell it out. <laughs> that sounds weird. <laughs> I'm sorry. That whole thing was made for TV, was completely yes. useless. I think Erin made a quick buck with all the sponsors. She wanted to have an event so she could say I had an event. And she wanted to make it a big splash and say she was a housewife. It was just weird, weird, weird. That's it. Absolutely. And I actually thought that even more when they have that scene, which we skipped over, where they go out to dinner and there's a mysterious penguin in the background. And did you notice the penguin in the background? No. I'm going to send you. What are you talking about? I took a picture. There, I'm going to look at your phone. There is a penguin in the background on the booth behind Abe. What? <laughs> what? How did I miss this penguin with the wine glass in front of it? And the bald guy next to it. This is the weirdest shit. How did I miss, <laughs> miss this? <laughs> what am I looking at? What am I looking at? It's as silly as is that a man on a date with a penguin? <laughs> is that a bot this bald man is on a date with a penguin? What is happening? You know, here? like they say furries, like the furry. <laughs> yeah. Did you just bring us best penguin, best furry out for a date <laughs> dinner? <laughs> what am I looking at here? <laughs> I'm gonna tweet it so you This is so weird. <laughs> So, so, oh my god. So at that dinner when he gives her the ring, I also felt like she was just like it didn't feel real to me. She was like, "Oh my god, no way. A ring, a big rock. I want a big rock. Oh, you have a big rock? Oh, shut up, Abe. Thanks." Like it just was so fake. What? Didn't you feel like it was so fake? I know. She's she's terrible. She is just terrible. She was, first of all, she was pissed off that he brought her to that place. <laughs> and in that conversation, she even, he says that you were so upset that I asked you to come downtown, uh, uptown. Well, oh no, downtown when I, when we were first dating. And now she's like, yeah, but now I don't like to go uptown. Right? Yeah. And it's like, but you were upset. You So you were a snob like that, but you are upset that Jessel is a snob about Tribeca? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There you go. Um, also at the party, what else happens? Oh, the speeches are too long. The girls are bored and hungry and they leave. Like, oh, somebody's hair catches on fire, which is more exciting than anything <laughs> else that happened at the stupid party. <laughs> That that party was so drawn out. I was getting pissed as I was watching it. I was like, why am I watching this? Why couldn't they just fast forward it and say 45 minutes later 40 or whatever, right? Yeah. And just keep going. But I think the, the producers wanted the audience to feel the pain because Jessel is going to be upset. Uh, Aaron is going to be upset, upset about it next week. And... The producers don't like Aaron yeah. and they are prepping us to be on the side of all the other girls. Yeah. That's how I feel. Like there was no need to subject us to all of that. It, it felt like I was there at that party and it was taking way too long yeah, to finish. Exactly. I was getting hungry. I wanted to go to Nobu. I was actually eating while I was watching it and I was eating faster because I was worried that the food was going to go away because I felt hungry as they were getting hungry. <laughs> I was like, like, you ate two meals during that time period because it was so long. I thought Aaron was going to snatch my plate out of my hand. Be like, no, we don't even you had breakfast, lunch. No, you had breakfast, lunch, and dinner while that was going on. It <laughs> took that long for that exactly. whole thing to end. When they cut to the guy who was like hosting the event and they showed the stacks of paper and I was like, and there's so many lines on the page. Like, what? Yeah. Is going on? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jenna was the first one to like, he's got like. 15 pages in his head. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so I want to do a new segment on the podcast called Can I Say what? Something Without You Getting Mad at Me? And it's a section where – it's a segment where I will encourage our listeners to submit their bitchiest, meanest, most pettiest, most unpopular opinions and takes. And it can be about the show that we're recapping. It can just be about life. When I do my pop culture recaps with Raheel, I'll probably talk more about like 
pop culture and politics stuff. But today, people submitted some stuff on Instagram. So if you are listening to, th- I do this every time I come on. <laughs> I tell you how how good you look or how terrible you look. <laughs> no, like <laughs> my say something. Like you look tired today. <laughs> Like, can I say something? I think Verizon and the water company are in cahoots. Like, that's my, can I say something? Okay. But I don't know if this is going to be good. I, I feel like you're inviting trouble here. I can't wait. Okay. So, but one of the things that somebody <laughs> said was, um, can I say something? Erin deeply upsets me because as a Jew, she's failing with the food thing. And I agree with that. Oh, I so agree with that. Yeah. And I'm offended for my. I've mentioned. I don't understand yeah. how somebody, somebody who is Jewish, Italian, or South Asian cannot be not pre, not leading with food in your hands. Yeah, like there has to be food at all times. This is waspy behavior. Like, this is some like right. Middle America stuff. Like maybe not Middle America. No, even in Middle, middle America, America we'll you have you. some. Yeah. you have a ranch yeah. bottle somewhere. <laughs> it's there. A ranch <laughs> bottle. <laughs> I think it's more like, yeah, it's waspy Connecticut kind of behavior where you don't feed anybody anything or Beverly Hills where you don't eat at all. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. Where Rinna has her annual hot dog, one bunless right, hot dog. Right. Right. <laughs> but it's short, it's definitely not. Even like, you know, Kyle, even Kyle puts food out. Whether they, it gets eaten or not, she'll put food out. Yeah. It just, uh, it's upsetting. It's upsetting, and uh, I wish that Aaron would do better. Now, I was um, watching Ben and Ronnie on Instagram Live. They do their Monday crappy mm-hmm. hour every other Monday, and Jessel was on that, and apparently Aaron was also on that in the comments, and they said that there was oh, food wow. at the party. Yeah, the pigs in the blanket. That's not – doesn't count as food. That's hors d'oeuvres. That's – If you're – That's nothing. That's – Yeah. If your, if your guests are hungry – you didn't have food in your at your uh, at your event. Yeah, it's silly. It's silly. And you're in New York. You you know people have different kinds of, especially in New York. People have gluten allergy, this that, vegetarian, vegan, whatever. You should have a few hun- few different kinds of hors d'oeuvres passed around. Yeah. When you are spending that much money for, you know, for those shitty vows <laughs> that you said to each other. You should have, there should have been one sponsor who sponsored good food. I'm just disappointed yeah. in the sponsorship committee that put together this yeah. event. Yeah. <laughs> who was it sponsored by? Like Teddy? Not the New York Association of Street Vendors or whatever that was. The fried chicken <laughs> committee? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not the fried chicken committee. Well, let me tell you something. If Bavith was hosting that event, you, there would be at least be fried uh-huh. chicken there because of the fried chicken committee. Right. There, so I did you know that I went and looked up the New York Association of Street Food Vendors? There is a street, um, f- there's a food truck associate, New York as- Association for Food Truck Vendors, and then there's a street food association. And I went and tried to figure out he, if he was indeed on the board of those, um, but I couldn't figure that out. I couldn't find the board composition and who was on the board of it and how Pavit got onto the board. It's definitely not on his LinkedIn. Well, so I I started Pavit on LinkedIn and it wasn't on his LinkedIn either. So I will say that there is an organization in New York City called the Street Vendor Project and they host something called the Vendies every year, which is like a um, – it's a, an award ah. that they do. It's a competition and ah. then they give an award to a street vendor. And it's also – the it's part of a – it's part of the Urban Justice Center. And the reason why is because they're a nonprofit organization that provides legal um, representation and advocacy to a lot of these street vendors uh-huh. because typically right. these hot dog guys, these boiled peanuts guys, yeah. all these guys, like, yeah, how else are they insured and taken care of? They're in the street. Is Pavit on the board of that? I don't know. Maybe he is. I don't know. But because he seemed very uh, serious about the way he mentioned the organization. So I looked up what Pavit said. There's no organization of that particular name, but there are like organizations similar to that. Okay. So maybe it maybe it's something so, like that. Yeah. I was I wasn't sure if he was joking or if he was serious that there was such an organization and he wasn't the board of it. But 
I couldn't find anything. I can't find his name on, <laughs> on here, but there are a bunch of daisies on here. Yes. The other association also, the street, uh, the food truck vendors, all of that had all, a whole bunch of daisies on it. So I'm like, oh my God, our people are taking over the vending machines and the vending uh, vending trucks. It's not the vending machines. It's just the v- <laughs> vendors. <laughs> I think no, the other one was also vending machines. Oh, yeah. It also controlled the vending machine. It was also the vending machines across the state, across the city. That was also under uh, that particular association. And I was like, oh, vending machines too, not just hotels. Well, I'm telling you, okay. we are passionate about making food accessible. So, like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course. And street food yeah. is such a big part of our culture. Like, we are really a South Asian has South Asian food has a lot of street foods and it's like mm-hmm. such a thing you do when you go to India or Pakistan or Bangladesh right. like you have to have the street food so it makes sense yeah. that they would all be involved and I'm very proud of Bhavit for yeah. being part of the fried chicken committee. <laughs> <laughs> He should put that proudly in the application for his kid. <laughs> to that, uh, exactly. To that ho- hoity-toity school. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, well, that's it for this episode. Um, I'll be back later on this week talking about other stuff. And um, just real quick, um, every day does your hatred for Bethany Frankel grow? Uh, slightly, oh, okay. a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. But I also I am actively avoiding her, mm. so I'm avoiding all content by her. I'm avoiding everything she's working on, what she's saying. Uh, I think the most I heard about her was on what what crappens um, the Instagram live uh, portion where Ben and Ronnie were talking about it. That's the most I heard. And then I was like already tired of that. I was like, okay, I cannot even hear them talk about Bethany. I'm just kind of done. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. I'm actively avoiding her. So I don't know. No, it's okay. It's okay to avoid. So your it's only exes. a gradual, gradual increase in hatred because I am not really committing to that. Yeah, it's okay to want to avoid your exes because it reminds you of the love that you once had for this cringe person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Rena. Right. Yes.